The last minute of your timer is running ding tong get ready Oh shit 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 okay okay oh my god Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Gary's Kitchen. Uh, today we're making a southern barbecue platter. I have my 48 hour sous vide ribs ready to go. I'm gonna grill on my stovetop. There is two flavors of ribs. Uh, one is the advanced GG flavor that I'm using Techie's uh, flavor for, and one is just a regular traditional flavoring for ribs. And we're gonna be making some traditional barbecue platter side dishes like collard greens, mashed potatoes, macaroni salad, and cornbread. I'm actually very very excited so let's start cooking together water is boiling let me do the macaroni first i'm only gonna put a little bit eh, eh, eh. my hole isn't big enough my Hi hole isn't yeah. big enough i did about half a third of a bag half a bag while that's happening i'm going to prepare the collard greens collard greens has a really uh tough and chewy and fibrous uh stem that goes from the bottom all the way to the middle part of the leaf itself. So we only want to eat the leaf and not the actual stem, but the stem does protrude into the leaf. So what we're gonna do, you stack your leaves into like a flat pile like this. I have like three pieces of leaves together. And then you're gonna fold it in half like this, like origami, you're gonna fold it in half. And now you can see how the stem is all facing one direction, all on one side. And then you place it flat on your cutting board and you grab your knife and then you literally just trim around the stem and remove the stem just like that so all the stem is taken out like this so all you get is the stem and all you have left as the byproduct is the leaf i'm just going to prepare all the leaves first and remove all the stems and then and then we'll move on to the next step okay i'm just going to open up my fans now all the collard greens that i cut earlier line it in one direction i'm going to lay it all together like this now and then i'm going to cut it this way into strips so collard greens are done. I'm gonna slice the onion for the collard greens. So taste your pasta. You should aim for cooked, basically al dente, because we are gonna be running this under cold water to stop it from cooking, because macaroni salad is usually cold, it's not hot. So it's okay if it's done the way that you like it, and then just stop the cooking, rinse it under cold water, and just have it uh, sit there. I'm gonna drain my pasta. I'm gonna come back. You get a pom pom intermission. Pom -pom intermission while I rinse the pasta. Thank you for keeping everybody busy. No, no, no. Oh, she's so gentle about it today. That's so cute. We're gonna take a small break from prepping the vegetables and we're gonna make the cornbread. We're pivoting. So I actually have like these little pretty tin cans that I'm gonna make the cornbread into. So they're gonna be single serving instead of an actual um, cast iron. I know that's tr traditionally in a cast iron, but I kind of want just so it's easier to store for me and to eat like separately. Okay, I'm gonna get my cornmeal. We're looking for a cup and a half. This is one cup and I need about half a cup. I'm gonna eyeball this just a little bit. That looks about half a cup. Okay, and I need half a cup of AP flour. Oni bro, is it okay if you put the flour away for me? Oh, and bring me the eggs. I forgot the eggs. Two eggs. Ah! Bruh. <laughs> do you see it? The, the egg broke. Okay, we're gonna do one cup of sugar. That's a lot of sugar, holy shit. We're gonna do just short of one cup of sugar because that's a lot of sugar. This isn't the original idea, but because my eggs are fridge cold and I need my eggs to be room temperature, I will use the water as a bain-marie. I'm gonna do a, a double boiler for my eggs just to warm up the eggs and also to warm up the butter. Cause right now the eggs are too, room are too cold. If I put cold eggs in room temperature butter, it's the butter is gonna solidify and chunk up and then it's not gonna be nice and smooth. So I need to make sure everything is even temperature. Uh, what else do I need? I need salt. Oh, I forgot baking powder. I'm gonna eyeball the baking powder. It's just one teaspoon. One teaspoon looks about like that. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna let this soak in the hot water for a little bit. I think doing it the other way is too slow because my measuring bowl is insulated. So the temperature is not going through as fast. Using your thighs is faster. Really? Are you sure? Why don't you prove it to me first? Here, dem demonstration, and then I'll think about it, okay? The eggs are warm now, so I'm gonna remove the water. I'm gonna crack my egg in. Uh, because my butter is also not melted, it does require a microwave, but I don't actually have my microwave with me. So I'm actually just going to melt it directly with the eggs. We need um, half a cup. So one stick of butter is about half a cup. I'm gonna eyeball it, which 
which is about here. I'm just gonna cut the butter into smaller chunks um, just so that it melts a little easier because it's not like fully room temperature yet either. I'm gonna let that melt down a little bit and then we're gonna add the milk and everything else. I am trying to keep an eye on this though because I don't want the eggs to cook. Oh my God, this butter is taking forever to melt down. I wonder if I can just beat the shit out of it. Oh no. As this is going, I think I'm just gonna like chop up the garlic or, or something. And I'm also gonna prep the peppers for the macaroni salad. It's just for a little bit of color and for a little bit of crunch for the macaroni salad. So uh, pepper, I just have a half of it or whatever, a quarter of it. I'm just gonna do thin little slices and then I'm gonna make thin little cubes. We're not really cooking this or anything. So as small as possible makes it a little bit better eaten. I guess. If you don't like green pepper, just take it out. If you don't like pepper at all, don't put it in there. It's not a big deal. This is just to make it a little bit pretty. That's all. I'm gonna take this out a little bit. I'm gonna add the rest of the ingredients now. We need one cup of buttermilk. So my trick for getting buttermilk, if you don't actually have milk, is basically just regular milk with like a tiny, tiny splash of white vinegar. So like one teaspoon or two teaspoons or so, not much whatsoever. Buttermilk is just basically more acidic milk. So you can kind of fake it using vinegar if you don't want to go out of your way to buy buttermilk or like waste it kind of thing. And I need one third cup of oil. And uh, the special ingredient, I guess, that I read online was actually honey. So I want to add in three tablespoons of honey. One, two, three. So this is the wet component for the cornbread. We have our dry component and we're just going to slowly whisk in the dry into the wet. So I'm going to make a little well here in the middle and then just going to slowly pour it in little by little and then incorporate it. We're looking for a smooth smooth paste. It shouldn't be very doughy. It should be quite smooth. So the cornmeal batter is done. Okay, I'm just gonna grab some butter and I'm gonna butter the inside of my tins so it doesn't stick. And then I'm gonna oil a few and then we're gonna make our cornbread. I have my oven preheating at one, uh, 350 degrees, which is about 170, 160 degrees Celsius. So just make sure that your oven is preheated and ready to go before anything. And then you can just pop your cornbread in. I have my little tins. I'm gonna grab maybe Maybe my quarter cup. I'm gonna just grab this and I'm gonna fill my molds. I still have a lot left. What to do? Ah! No one saw that. No one saw that. Everyone don't look. Don't look at me. No one saw that, right? Every, everything is fine. I'm just gonna fill this as if nothing happened. All right, I'm gonna place my cornbread into the oven for about 20 minutes or so. Uh, chat, could you set a timer for uh, 20 minutes for me? Please, please, please. 20 minutes, not 20 years, not 20 days, not 20 seconds, 20 minutes, okay? Please, I would appreciate that. Okay, I'll be back. We can finally start on the potatoes and stuff now. I have two russet potatoes because I will be making mashed potatoes with these. I'm gonna peel these and I'm gonna cut them into more manageable pieces. Oh, don't peel them. Oh, but I, oh, no, I, oh, okay, fine. I'll leave one on. I'll remove the blemishes at least. Okay, I'll leave, I'll leave one peeled and one not peeled. So at the end of the day, it's still a little bit peeled. And then I'm gonna cut them into small-ish chunks. So they cook a little faster. So we're not here forever trying to like boil it down, you know? Like that, half lengthwise and then another quarter widthwise. And the same idea with this one. I'm gonna put the potatoes in. I salted the water a little bit and this takes about, I don't know, 15 minutes to boil, maybe? We're looking for fork tender, so it's easy for it for us to mash it later. I'm gonna wait for that to boil. I'm gonna prepare the bacon first. I'm gonna cut the bacon down. Um, how many slices of bacon is good, do you guys think, for collard greens? All of it? All of it? All of it, really? Is this not too much bacon for like, you know, all the collard greens. This is a lot of bacon, guys. Okay, so we're aiming for chewy bacon. So I'm gonna cut them bite size, but not too small. Five minutes left on the timer. Okay, actually, I'm gonna take a peek at my cornbread right now and see how it goes. All right, pom-pom, distract. It's not quite ready yet. It still needs a bit of time. I think another 15 minutes on top of whatever is left. I'm gonna take the potatoes out now, I think. I'm gonna put these in here and then I'm gonna start mashing them. I have to use a fork to mash it because we want it kind of lumpy and not um, super smooth. I'm gonna add some salt in while it's still warm. I'm gonna add some MSG. I know you guys love your MSG. Add a little bit of pepper and I'm gonna get a nice chunk of butter here. That's a lot of butter. <laughs> 
<laughs> I just literally put in like a whole stick of butter in there. This is gonna be a very buttery mashed potato. <laughs> That's so much butter. Is it okay? Did I do a mistake? It should be okay, right? I'm gonna come back to this. I'm gonna actually have to work on the collard greens because it takes time to cook down. I'm gonna heat up the uh, heat up the oil. Get the onions in there. Cook the onions down just a little bit. We're not browning them or anything. We're not caramelizing them. Just cooking it a little bit. And I probably will throw in the bacon now. This is a lot of bacon. I feel this feels wrong. It's literally half bacon, half vegetable. I'm gonna wait for the bacon to cool uh, to cook down just a bit. Now we can go back to our mashed potatoes here. I like my mashed potatoes like creamy. So I'm gonna add a little bit of milk. The bacon is pretty much cooked. It's like chewy bacon. It's not crispy or anything. It's just chewy. And we're gonna render our collard greens now. Oh God, this pot is not big enough. Oh God, where'd the bacon go? The bacon's on the bottom. <laughs> Don't worry, I know you guys are all worried about the fucking bacon. The bacon's still here, see? The bacon's here. Collard greens takes actually a while to cook down. It's not one of those like fast stir fry dishes because collard greens, the vegetable is quite tough itself. It does need a little bit of time to render down. So normally you would soak this in chicken stock, but I don't actually have chicken stock with me today. So I'm just gonna cover it with water and I'm going to use chicken powder instead, which is just basically chicken MSG, put a lot in there. And then we're just gonna mix everything in and let that boil and slow cook that for a little bit. Cornbread is done. It's nice and golden brown on the edges. I'm actually gonna put it in the other room so it can cool down properly. I think I'm ready to... Oh, put in the horseradish. I gotta... Uh, I can't open this. Fuck. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit of horseradish. I'm just gonna mix the horseradish in and give it one final taste. And the mashed potatoes should be done. Hmm. Oh, it's so good. It's salty, creamy, a little bit of a kick. Okay, I'm going to start my grill and slowly make the macaroni salad. Okay, I'm gonna put in my peppers. Okay, so this is sour cream. I'm gonna add my sweet pickles. This is just relish, but it's like sweet relish. You're looking for gherkins. I was just too lazy to get gherkins and chop it myself because you need the pickle and also the juice of the pickle. So I just got relish instead. It's just a shortcut. And then I'm gonna add some mustard. I think you can adjust, however. I don't, I'm not a huge mustard lover, so I'm gonna put in that much. And I forgot my fucking mayo, so I'm sorry, chat. Let me go grab the mayo. I should probably get some salt too. Salt, MSG, pepper, mayo. Eh, eh, eh. Eh, eh. What? Okay, there we go. And you just mix, 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 mix. And that's your macaroni salad. Pretty simple. We can grill now. Ooh, this is so soft. Ooh. Okay, so I don't know which one is... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. That's a lot of smoke. Hold on, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. tomate, chio tomate. Oh my God, my house is gonna burn down. My house is gonna burn down. I'm gonna oil this first. Oil the pan. Okay, that's kind of better. I'm gonna put on my Diana sauce and we're gonna glaze that. The ribs are already fully cooked for those who are wondering. Uh, the ribs I have made on the weekend for 48 hours on the sous vide. So everything is nice and warm. We're only looking to have like a nice charcoal-y outside. Look, 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 look. It just breaks open. Look, I guess this can be, this can be Oni Bros for now. I'm gonna put on the other half. So both of these are the normal ones. This is the advanced GG flavor. It's catching on fire. <gasps> I feel like I'm in the middle of like a campsite. My eyes are like stinging from the smoke. You can eat first Oni Bro while I finish off the rest. This is almost done. I'll give you the side dishes and everything in a bit. I'm gonna grab a little bit of mashed potato. I'm gonna get some macaroni salad. This is the advanced GG one and I'm gonna get the collard greens as well. I'm gonna taste it first. Oh no, I didn't add the I didn't add the sugar and the vinegar yet. Uh, sugar, just a pinch, I think. And a little bit of vinegar. I'm gonna try it. Mm, actually, it's good. It's like tangy. It's actually quite soft already. I'm gonna grab some collard greens for Oni Bro. I don't think he likes veggies too much, so I won't give him too much. I'm gonna grab a cornbread for him as well. Tell me how it is. Can you taste the difference between Techie's Tropical Twist and just original. I'm curious. The advanced GG one is better? <gasps> Let's go. Wait, really? What, how how is it better? Is it is it possible to describe? The regular one tastes like a regular rib, which is good, but the advanced GG one has a really nice tang. Oh, does it? This episode brought to you by advanced GG, by the way, everybody. You too can get your own juiced up ribs if you use my link down below for an Oni Mart 10% off your very own advanced GG. And you too can make really scrumptious ribs that is A plus that even Oni Bro has approved. Are you able to give like a rating for maybe the advanced GG flavor? 
flavor and then regular flavor and maybe just like the platter in general, I guess. Regular ones are a solid, wait, 7.5 out of eight. Wait, 7.5 out of eight? <laughs> uh, what about the advanced GG rating? What's the advanced GG one? A nine, I think? <gasps> a nine! Really? Hell yeah. Okay, I'm gonna make my lemonade. I have some mint. I have some ice. I'm ready to hydrate with my lemon laid. It's like a, it's like an advanced GG meal, you know? It's drink and food all in one. I'm gonna use my shaker, my buff up shaker, cause I like to just mix it in the shaker itself. It's the easiest. I'm gonna get my lemon in your flavor. I actually really like it. I tried this for the first time two weeks ago and it's so refreshing. I'm gonna shake it. I'm gonna pour it in here and then I'm gonna add some ice and some mint. That's gonna be a cute little thing. We got our lemonade. It's looking cute. How was the cornbread, by the way? And the side dishes, Oni Bro. Greens, five out of 10. Potato size, both eight out of 10. Okay, all right. I mean, Oni Bro doesn't like his vegetables, so five out of 10 is fair. And here we have the completed dish. We finally seared off our 48 hour ribs. We have collard greens that I'm trying for the first time. We got sweet cornbread, macaroni salad, and also, of course, mashed potatoes with a little bit of horseradish in there. Um, I'm very, very excited to try this platter. I'm ready to dig in. Um, I'm I'm really curious how the advanced GG ribs are going to turn out. So I think it's going to be really cool. Uh, thank you so much for watching the video, guys. If you ever try it out for yourself, um, make sure you leave a comment down below. I would love to see how it turned out for you guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, everybody.